the one thing all of us certainly learned from seven seasons of Game of Thrones is that Lannisters always pay their debts, but what if that leads to the downfall of the house itself? The fourth episode of the previous season provided us some insight into how Cersei is handling the Lannisters' financial dealings with the Iron Bank of Braavos. In that episode, the representative of the Iron Bank meets with Cersei for a second time and congratulates Cersei. True to her family's motto, she had repaid all of the Lannisters' debt to the bank. Tycho flatters Cersei by pointing out that she seems to be almost surpassing her father in this regard. While this may sound like Queen Cersei has just accomplished a great achievement, it may actually have been the move that will seal her fate. Basically, in this theory, Tywin was purposely not repaying his debts to the Iron Bank as a strategy to keep the financial institution interested in the land's terrain. If they are still owed money by the reigning family, then of course the bank would prefer them to stay in power so it can make its money back. The key difference between Tywin's and Cersei's strategies is that Tywin knew that while the Lannisters were in debt to the Iron Bank, the bank had a vested interest in their success. Now that Cersei has paid out the debts, the Iron Bank really has no reason to support the Lannisters. The Iron Bank supports and funds a person they see capable of being successful in the long run, but most importantly, they side with the safer investments. Let's take a look on a scene from the third episode of the previous season. Now let's take a look on a scene that took place a few episodes later. If both Jaime and Cersei are aware that they, the Lannisters, have no chance of defeating Daenerys, even if Cersei is to replace their huge losses with mercenaries, why would the Iron Bank support Cersei over Daenerys? Well, they don't. Tychon Storch, a representative of the Iron Bank, did assure Cersei that they will support the chosen victor of the Iron Throne once their debt is paid, but that doesn't necessarily mean they will support the Lannisters, respectively Cersei herself as their current queen, but rather a person they consider will end on the Iron Throne once the war is over. In the season 7 finale, Cersei explains to Jaime how she will use the Iron Bank's support to prevail in the end, but that may not be so easy since the bank most certainly doesn't see Cersei capable of being successful in the long run, nor capable of winning a war against Daenerys Targaryen and Jon Snow. In conclusion, the Lannisters' unpaid debt was what kept the Iron Bank interested in House Lannister's success for so long. Now that her debt is fully repaid, there's nothing obligating the Iron Bank to support Cersei in the war against Daenerys and her allies. If this comes true, if the Iron Bank truly turns their back on Cersei, then this theory even points out the ultimate irony that, if Cersei loses, she will fall because she a Lannister paid her debt.